I'm Anna Nolstor and I'm an information specialist with the Cochrane Dementia and Cognitive Improvement Group and I lead on the Cochrane Crowd Initiative as well. And I'm going to talk about a retrospective analysis that the centralised search service team has undertaken to evaluate the CSS search and screening processes. I have no conflicts of interest, but I should say I am a member of the centralised search service team. We set out with two clear aims of this work. First, we wanted to assess the centralised search service processes, and I'll come on to what those are in a moment. And second, we wanted to come up with a list of tangible ways we could improve our processes. So first of all, what is the CSS? Well, the Centralised Search Service is an initiative that aims to populate the Cochrane Central Register of Controlled Trials with reports of randomised or quasi-randomised trials. There are currently five external sources that are searched centrally for RCTs or QRCTs. They are NLM's PubMed, Embase, owned by Elsevier, CareerMed, a service of the Korean Association of Medical Journal Editors, NLM's clinicaltrials.gov, and the World Health Organization's International Clinical Trials Registry Platform, ICTRP. We will be adding a sixth source soon, which will be EBSCO CINAHL. So RCTs from each of the external sources are identified through tailored workflows that use methodological filters, crowdsourcing and machine learning. Starting with methodological filters, these are collections of terms, they can be free text or controlled vocabulary, that get appended to a search strategy with the aim of reducing the number of hits retrieved. Crowdsourcing is the engagement of a large group of people to perform an activity, usually via the internet. And machine learning in this context is the building of machine learning classifiers from high quality training data that can distinguish between different classes of things, i.e. RCTs from non-RCTs. In addition to these three techniques or methods or processes, where possible, we've also established a number of direct feeds of RCTs from these external sources. And this is where a record has already been indexed as an RCT, and it then gets directly fed into Central. So that's a very quick overview of what the CSS is and how it works. I've attempted here to summarise what we currently do for each of the external sources. So with PubMed, we use a very simple methodological filter that's based only on record publication type and we then directly feed the records identified from this filter into Central. With Embase, we use all four techniques. We have a direct feed of records indexed with the mTree term RCT. We then have a very comprehensive third generation type methodological filter to identify records that might be RCTs but have not been indexed as such. And we send those records through the machine learning RCT classifier, which knocks out a sizable proportion of non-RCTs. And the remaining records are then sent to Cochrane Crowd for manual screening. With CareerMed, we run all newly added records through the RCT classifier, which knocks out the obvious non-RCTs. And the rest go to Cochrane Crowd for manual screening. With CT.gov, we use a machine learning classifier specifically developed for CT.gov. And records that get above a certain score are then sent directly to Central and the rest are screened by Cochrane Crowd. And finally, with ICTRP, we harvest all newly added records each month, remove the ct.gov records as they're handled by the just described workflow, and then send the remaining records to the Cochrane Crowd for manual screening. So that was a quick overview of what the CSS is and how it works. But I now want to go into some detail about an analysis we've done to assess how well the CSS is working. So this is a retrospective analysis that aims to assess how comprehensive our centralised search and screening processes are by looking at whether included studies in Cochrane reviews had been identified by these processes. We wanted to know 
if the study had been identified by our centralized processes, how had it been identified? And if the study had not been identified by our centralized processes, why had it been missed? Before I go any further, I just want to take you through a few parameters of this analysis. For this analysis, we focused on included studies with a publication or registration date of 2017 or 2018. Why did we focus on these years? Well, we want to know how well the CSS is performing currently, using evidence from recent years where the routines and processes I've described were in place. Second, we focused our efforts on references to included studies. We did not look at references to ongoing studies or indeed studies awaiting classification. Third, we did not look at whether the review searches for the references to studies included in this analysis did identify the reference from their search of central. In other words, we were looking at whether the CSS processes had found the RCT, not whether the study had been found by the search of central. This is something we hope to look at at a later date. So in April this year, we downloaded the IDs, the accession numbers or the trial registration numbers of all included studies that had either a year of publication of 2017 or 2018 or a trial registration date of 2017 or 2018. This gave us 782 references. We then cleaned the data set up a little, removing duplicates and references to non-RCTs and removing the 89 other references. This other category are things like email correspondence or unpublished data. We were left with a data set of 650 references. We then classified each one by type, journal reference, conference publication or trial registry record. You'll notice the numbers for 2018 are much smaller than for 2017. This is because we downloaded the data in early April this year. These numbers will already be different if we downloaded the data now, six months on, because there will have been more reviews published that contain included studies with a year of publication of 2018. So with our 650 references, we then ran an audit trail for each one to identify if the CSS had found it and how the CSS had found it. And of the 650 eligible reference, references for our analysis, 634 had been identified by the CSS. The CSS processes therefore identified 97.5% of the 2017-2018 references included in this analysis. Let's have a look now at which of the CSS processes had identified these studies. So this pie chart shows the breakdown of where each of the 634 references were identified from. Almost half came from the Embase direct feed, another sizable chunk from the PubMed direct feed, some from trial registry direct feeds, and that leaves 110 or 17.4% identified manually by the Cochrane crowd. Now let's turn our attention to the 16 missed references to included studies. How were they missed? Well, six had PubMed not Medline status and were therefore not captured by the Embase search because while Embase now subsumes Medline content, this does not include all records that have a PubMed not Medline status. In addition, each of these records did not have RCT or CCT publication type in PubMed. So they were not picked up by the PubMed direct feed. Four were not picked up by the Embase filter, even though they were in Embase. And if we look at these in more detail, of the four missed references to studies not picked up by the Embase filter, three were secondary publications. So in other words, they weren't the main publication to the trial. Only one was deemed the primary reference to the trial and indeed was the only reference given for that trial in the review. Why was this reference missed? It was not explicit in the title or abstract or index terms that it was an RCT, even though it was. 
the closest it came to indicating that it might be one was in the abstract where it said the current study examined the comparative efficacy of a 12-week blah blah it did also have controlled study and comparative effectiveness as index terms and currently the Embase filter does not include these terms it does have the narrower controlled the narrower term controlled clinical study a further three studies were misclassified by Cochrane crowd of these three studies misclassified by the crowd all three were secondary publications to a trial of the remaining three missed references, one was a journal article not published in a journal indexed by Embase or PubMed. One wasn't added to Embase until week 34 of this year, despite having been published in 2018, though it was a conference publication. And the other is the only record to have been mistakenly knocked out by the RCT classifier. I want to point out that this analysis does, of course, have some limitations. We focused on references that had a publication year of 2017 or 18 for good reason, but it does mean our data set isn't vast and indeed is small in terms of the number of trial registry records. Also, we're only therefore really assessing our more recent processes, yet the centralized processes have been around for some time in different forms for many years in Cochrane. I want to just end by summarizing some additional key points about the CSS. The first is that there is obviously a time lag between when a record appears in the source database to when it appears in Central, and this time lag can vary. The challenges are that Central is only updated on a monthly basis and that records that go to the crowd can end up needing to be resolved, which can take some time. The second thing to be aware of is that over the years, the centralized search is employed to identify records from external databases has changed. <clears throat> I think the Embase search, for example, is more sensitive now than it was in the past. We've also slightly broadened the eligibility criteria for Central over the years not in terms of eligible study designs, but in terms of publication types. And third, no process will be 100% perfect all the time. As this analysis shows, until researchers, editors and indexers consistently describe or report RCTs, some studies will inevitably slip through the cracks. And finally, with my last point, I'm reminded of the famous Fields quote about never working with animals or children, or to my mind, databases. Of course, databases are actually amazing. They've transformed our lives, but the more complex they are, and the more they can do, the more room for error, bugs, and glitches. They're also subject to change. For example, a few years ago, the Embase accession number in Ovid was replaced by a, a sort of more true Embase accession number, previously not visible in Ovid. That might seem like a small change, but for our work, it had a big impact as we relied on that ID number for deduplication purposes. In summary, the CSS processes appear to be working well. As a result of this analysis, we will focus some of our next efforts on capturing more PubMed, not Medline records, potentially tweaking the Embase search, and we have already started to review the Cochrane Crowd training material to try and ensure that as little as possible is missed. Thank you very much.